Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. I really appreciate you stopping by. And I'm definitely not where I thought I was gonna be for this video. So I originally planned on a on a brief visit to the Mineola Nature Preserve. Was gonna do a little tent camping there uh, simply because the price of diesel is, is exorbitant right now. And it, I just was on a one night adventure. It's summer, it's hot. I wanna do some tent camping and, and work with the Zero Breeze air conditioner in the tent. So there's a couple of, couple of things I wanted to accomplish. And I get to the Mineola Nature Preserve and it's a great waypoint stop if you're traveling in the Tyler area and you have a motor home or a travel, if you have any kind of RV. It's not really a good place for tent campers. Uh, it is full service though, so if you need a full service connection waypoint stop, the Equestrian Center at Mineola Nature Preserve is perfect. Lots of trails to hike and things to see there. I was gonna do some trail rides on the scooter, but there wasn't really any place to pitch a tent or have public facilities. So I defaulted and I am now at Tyler State Park. One of the true gems in the Texas State Park system. The, the lake here is spring fed. It is super clear. I mean, the water is just crystal clear. They have, we'll go see some stuff. I've been here before. And you, I've brought you here before. We'll do the full go see this stuff video. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm waiting on my campsite to open up. I'm gonna have a, a picnic lunch and then we'll go see some stuff. Right now we're seeing the bridge. This a little island sticks out into the lake. You can almost, you can see the bottom of the lake here. It's dark. There's mercury in the water here, so you, they don't recommend you eat the fish. So let's go see some more stuff. My sight has opened up. Got a good sight. This is in the Lake View Loop. This is the only loop in Tyler State Park where you're actually adjacent to the water. The site number 211. On our last visit, we were in that campsite. That was, I don't remember what the number was. Anyway, doesn't matter. Got a pretty flat asphalt pad. The, the downside is it's kind of a weird layout with your picnic table and fire pit and lantern hook. Gotta have a lantern hook, we can't camp without that. But that's all down below the wall. And so you have to go down over there. If you have a big coach, that's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. But we are 50 amp, 30 and 50, water and sewer. And then the, the restroom is just right there. They're not too far to walk. Best of all, best of all, we have a beautiful lake view. How gorgeous is that? And a nice breeze coming off the water. It's not nearly as miserable as I was expecting this afternoon. I thought it was gonna be hot. It's hot, but it's pleasant. So let me deploy a little red and pop up a tent. And then we'll go see some stuff. Got the tent pitched. The two mount tent is deployed. It is set up. Got a little wrinkle there. It's because of what I'm doing on the inside. Let me show you. So I have the air conditioner hooked up. Uh, I, was, I was dwelling upon this maybe overthought it <laughs> but ha ah, 
It's much, much drier in here. So, I grabbed a bunch of little small dog blankets as I was leaving. And some rope that I always carry and kind of insulated as best I could. It seems to be helping. Time will tell. We're just testing a theory. We have cool air coming out. That's the important thing. A couple more things and then we'll go play. This visit to Tyler State Park is brought to you by CampgroundViews.com. Welcome to your secret weapon to finding the perfect campsite. Campground virtual tours are here. They're real and they're available for you. Have you ever been to Joshua Tree National Park? We have now. You're in Jumbo Rocks Campground, the most popular campground within that national park, and you're taking a look around. You're seeing the roads. You're seeing the sites. You're seeing how far away that restroom is from those sites. Details never before available to you as a camper are at your fingertips right now. You can even enter the dates of your stay. I'm going to be there on September 14th. You enter that date. Hit confirm, and your map will update, showing you which sites are green and available for your stay. Click on them and jump up to and take a look at that particular campsite. Is this one right for you? If it is, that's a pretty cool spot, isn't it? If it is, click on it, click book, and there you go. You can book that campsite right now. Campground virtual tours are available, as noted, for over 860 locations all across the United States. Go to campgroundviews.com, click on the virtual tours tab, and you'll see all the tours we have available right now. Note there's pages. Simply click on the pages to load more results and it'll update the map and the listings below with the different campgrounds we have available. If you want to go by state, click the regions tab and you can easily go to the various states that we currently have tours available of campgrounds all over the place. The campground virtual tours are a game changing experience and we invite you to join now by going to campgroundviews.com, clicking on join and signing up. The link is in the card up there and in the description down there. Go check them out. Use the code DUDERV and you'll get a super deal. Let's go play. The Lakeside RV Loop. I have it's about 50 50 pull through and back in. It is all full connection. Oh, so this loop, don't, they, don't, they don't want tents in this loop at all. They've got a sign that says, no tents allowed. But all of the sites are pull-throughs. This campground is full. This is one you really need to have camp nab to get a to get a site. So, camp nab is a, another website vendor that I work with. They do a really great job. They got a cool little algorithm that you put in your parameters and it just keeps pinging looking for available sites. All these sites would be easy to get level in. They're all pretty flat. All right, let's go see some more stuff. So if you want to burn some wood, they have a honor box, donation box, $5 for eight sticks. I had forgotten about that. And I asked the young lady at the little park store and she forgot too. <laughs> she said, I guess you have to go across the street and buy it. And so I did. Anyway, let's go see some more stuff. My boat ramp fans, there's the boat ramp. Now this is a no wake lake. It's actually better for kayaking and canoes. Now that's the little island where I opened the video. So let's let's go find some more 
Tyler State Park stuff. Tyler State Park actually has a, a couple of group pavilions and they have that one uh, group meeting hall somewhere. We'll go find it. But, but they also have a really popular uh, bicycle trail. So if you got a, a mountain bike, this is a good place to do it. Lots of hiking trails here. All right, let's go see some more Tyler State Park stuff. Kiddos are starting to drive you a little nuts because they've had too much sugar and, and you don't want them in the water. You'll be, whoa, glad to know that there is a very nice place structure. Tyler State Park is very well known for its swimming beach area. The last time we were here, there was no one swimming, but you can see that they've got a diving platform out in the middle and a concrete, concrete wall all the way along the beach. If you're looking for a cool place to swim during the summer, Tyler State Park got you covered. When you come to Tyler State Park and you desire a boat experience, man, they have got you covered here. More so than I think uh, any other state park I've been to. You got paddle boats, kayaks, john boats that you can row, they even have some stand-up paddle boards. All right, let's go see some more stuff. So if you're planning a visit to Tyler State Park and you, and you have handicap parking, the store actually has handicap parking that's down the hill. Just, just be aware, it's tight getting out if you have a like I had the F-150 in there and that, that was, that was kind of snug. Now they used to have a little restaurant here, but I think that it is no longer in operation. They used to sell like burgers and stuff. All right, let's, let's go see some more stuff. So this is the Cedar Point Camping Loop. If you want to see this in a little more detail, I'm going to, I'm going to do another scooter run now that everything is green. The last time I was here, it was not real green. <laughs> it, was, it was December or January. So you'll be able to see the stuff. Now this is this is water and electric only and if I recall from when I was looking for a reservation these are all 30 amp but if I'm wrong about that don't beat me up <laughs> all right let's go see some new stuff I was not joking when I said some new stuff. Check this out. They're putting in a new visitor center. So I think that's going to combine the office and the store into one. So I think it's supposed to be open next summer. All right, let's go find some more stuff. Uh, I I thought I was going to get to show you the other fishing dock, but it's out of order. Looks like it's falling apart. It is on the on the trail that go, it's on the trail that goes all the way around the, the state park. Maybe maybe they'll have it open if you come back and visit sometime. Or right next to the spillway. So this is the dam. So that's the dam. There's a trail that goes across there. And we'll we'll explore that in a maybe tomorrow morning. 
All right. Meanwhile, I gotta go back up those steps after my pointless visit to the fishing dock. <laughs> All right. You better take advantage of the campgroundviews.com deal because Little Red is dead in the water. So this will be the, the third time the tiller has broken, but it broke in a different place. You can see it if you look there's rust in here so that fracture has been there a long time I'll see if I can get it I won't be able to fix it here but I, I'm pretty sure I can weld that back together kind of puts a damper on the party here at doing what I do I still have the truck though so we'll go see some more stuff in the morning I'm gonna have a beer. So if you're coming out to Tyler State Park, one thing you really need to be aware of is the raccoon population. The raccoons here are as bad as or worse than they are at Purtis Creek. And they're really bad at Purtis Creek. Uh, and the only reason I'm bringing this up right now is because I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here burning wood and a raccoon just came around and went right into the weeds there. Now on our last visit, our neighbors had left their ice chest out and it, they had latched it. Uh, in the morning when they got up, their, <laughs> their ice chest was empty. Those little raccoons are, they're smart and they've got like little paw-like hands, little hand-like paws, they can get into stuff. So if you don't want the raccoons in it, don't leave it out. I see you looking at my garbage. You need to go on now. Go away. Good morning. Boy, it's a sticky morning too. So the temperature right now is 75 degrees and the dew point is about 75 degrees. So if you're from a drier climate, what that means is just standing here, moisture's condensing on your skin. Feels like sweat, but it's just the moisture. It's just, just yucky. And it's been that way. It was that way last night. We're gonna talk a little bit about the zero breeze and the tent the insulation test that i did uh, that would probably work but i don't think it's worthwhile it's just labor intensive and that's kind of defeating the purpose of why i wanted <laughs> i wanted to be easy to deploy and doing the insulation in the tent is just another time consuming step so i won't be pursuing that path and it didn't really make much difference with the zero breeze the zero breeze works now this is the water that came out of the air that uh, it's about a gallon maybe a little more than a gallon so it definitely dries the air it just can't keep up in the when the with this with this dew point with the humidity as high as it is 
uh, it just it just can't keep up in the tent because it's not sealed. And I think the only solution, and if I continue to use this, use the bell tent in the summer, I'm going to need a bigger AC unit. Trying to make that compatible with this, with the zero breeze, is is, is not going to. It just doesn't make sense. That's all right. I have a I have a big portable that I'm going to try on the the next tent outing. Downside of that, this is battery operated, so I can go off grid now, during the spring and fall when it's still hot, but it's not quite as humid. The zero breeze will be perfect. When it's when it's as humid as it is right now, I, I, I need a bigger AC to to do the tent thing, which means I have to have power in the form of a campsite with power or a generator that will operate and i hate to run a generator all night maybe a, a solar generator i have to be a big one to be able to power the small i have a 500 btu ac unit that i think would be perfect for the tent i'll explore that that'll be other videos for today's video this was eh, if i had not had the foresight to throw the big box fan in the truck when i was packing last night would have been a sticky miserable experience just saying that that made it possible to sleep good all night so i've got a few more things to to show you on this video and the plan was to use the scooter to do that but that plan changed so i'm gonna finish packing up and then we'll go see some more stuff the creekside loop at tyler state park you will find cabins that actually have air conditioners there's quite a few of those as well as a group dining hall that is also air conditioned so if you've got a big family reunion or some kind of gathering that you want to host and be out of the humidity, this would be a good place to do it. If you're interested in paying a visit to Tyler State Park and you don't want to sleep in a tent, don't own a tent, don't have an RV, but you don't want to get eat up by the skeeters, they have a whole host of screen cabins. There's no AC in these cabins. There's no beds, there's no amenities. They are well, I say no amenities. They have electricity, so you can get a fan going. Ooh, it's so humid. Hold on. So humid, my lens is fogging up as fast as I get it dried off. This particular cabin is right adjacent to the lake trail. There's actually a, a trail here somewhere but you can get down in there and there's a trail that goes all the way around the lake. All right, let's go see some more stuff. From here, we're gonna head over to the Mineola Nature Preserve. And just take a, take a quick stop. There's two, two points of interest there I'm gonna show you. So let's, let's go see some Mineola Nature Preserve stuff. When I started my journey, yesterday i had intended to camp overnight at the mineola nature preserve equestrian area which i'm going to show that to you now so those are the that's the tree side but none of those sites have power or water with the heat and humidity the way it is uh, I really felt that I needed some power and water. So that would have put me over here on this side. So if you're traveling through Mineola area and you need an overnight stop with full connections, $30 a night. Well, there's one other one other location there's one other thing i'm going to show you here if you're traveling on the road and you need to stretch your legs and you just need a, a 
peaceful place. The Mineola Nature Preserve has got a whole lot of hiking trails, multiple entrances. They even have a huge disc golf course. There's archery, there's a nature walk, playground, there's some ponds. This is on the Sabine River bottom. Of course, you probably, if you're a disc golf fanatic, you already probably are aware of this course. I don't know anything about disc golf. Too much walking. Well, that pretty well brings us to the end of our, our video here. Uh, it was just kind of spur of the moment video for me. Someday I may come back and scoot some of the trails here at the Mineola Nature Preserve, but I gotta have a little red. Uh, I gotta do a little work there. If you found some value in this video, I'd be very grateful if you'd click on that thumbs up and blast me out across your social media. If you've not already, I'd, also, I'd be so honored if you'd consider clicking on clicking I'd be honored if you'd click on that subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, wait for it. Wait for it. That's why we are here. That's why I, I came to this beautiful place. It was for you. Look at that. That is just awesome. And for my patrons. Thank you. It is most appreciated. You rock. All right. Y'all come back now. You hear?